so let's begin today's class as usual revision i will spend more time on on revision today and the topic is also very short less you already know it so what is this plum cake model of jj thompson what was his contribution according to him that each atom is a solid sphere each atom is a solid sphere right with a positive charge as you can see on the right side of the screen the whole atom itself is a solid mass and electrons are fixed on it right so positively and negatively charged are balanced so that was the concept of mr j j thompson to test his uh, concept his theory number of scientists uh, did so many experiments in one of the experiment put done by rutherford he thought that if j j thompson's idea is correct then as it is in routine that if we throw a ball on a screen uh, on a wall what will happen the ba the ball will bounce back right the ball will bounce back we all know why because the wall is solid and the ball itself is also solid so hitting the ball on the wall it will bounce back so solid after striking with another solid will bounce back so according to rutherford's thinking that same will happen if i if alpha rays what are alpha rays alpha rays are material particles are positively charged particles okay means matter like a ball if we hit ball alpha rays on a thin gold foil a thin gold foil means very very uh, small uh, small thickness 0.004 cm okay so we just say that a very very thin foil and he bombarded on it alpha particles so what was his concept that if j j thompson concept is correct then all the alpha particles should bounce back but what happened you know he was astonished to see that most of the alpha particle passed through the foil undeflected it appears that the atoms are hollow from inside right so the the concept what is the difference between thomson's concept and rutherford's concept thomson solid sphere atom is solid sphere electrons are embedded on it and according to rutherford's concept uh, experiment he proved that the atom is not uh, atom is not uh, solid but it is hollow all right now the next what else you observe you observe that some of the alpha particles bend at large angle alpha particles are positively charged and they don't like positive other positive charges so deflection is showing that the atom has something positive first part atom is empty most of the space is empty the second part is atom has something positive why because the uh, because of the diffraction of alpha particles but the question is where that positive thing is lying in an atom now that was the imaginary concept which was later proved to be correct that that positive thing lies in the center of an atom and uh, rutherford rutherford named that positive central part as nucleus so what is the uh, second of what was the second observation like uh, alpha rays bent at large angle showing there is something positive lying in, the, in an atom when where is that thing according to mr rutherford it is in the center and he named it as nucleus okay third observation what was the third observation 
that a few of the alpha particles means uh, uh, one in eight thousand bounce back. Like the, if you throw the ball on the wall, it will bounce back. So some are bouncing back. So it shows that. What does it show that? It shows that the atom has something positive, and these alpha particles are, are hitting on on that central positively charged nucleus and bouncing back. Okay. Now people ask, where are the electrons? According to Mr. Rutherford, electrons are revolving around the nucleus, like planets are revolving around the sun. As you can see over here, some of the uh, most of the alpha particles pass through this uh, and through an atom. Is that it's a symbolic graphical uh, form of Rutherford experiment on at atomic level. It's a single atom. So most of the space is clear. You can see alpha particles are passing through, bending. Okay. So these are three observations. All right. Has positive charge. All right. Third, the heat with the solid. The point. Where is the point? An atom is electrically neutral. Why? Because there are as many as. Positively charged particle as there are negatively charged particles. The whole mass is concentrated in the nucleus. Clear? Means you can say the mass of an atom is just due to uh, the mass of the nucleus. And finally, where are the electrons? Electrons are rolling around the nucleus in various orbits. What were the two object objections, drawbacks, as you can see on the screen? To move any object, we need energy, right? We need energy. When an electron is moving, it means an electron is consuming its energy, and as it it is consuming its energy, it will be attracted towards the positively charged nucleus, and ultimately it will fall into the nucleus in a spiral way. And how will it will take? How many? Uh, uh, how much time? Within a blink of second, a blink of eye, tens to the power minus eighteen seconds. Okay, like this. As soon as the electron spirally went into the nucleus, negative positive will hit together, and explosion will occur. Explosion will occur. Atom destroyed. Atom destroyed. Everything would be destroyed, but nothing is destroying. Nothing is destroying. Me, you, everything is here and there. It means electrons are not falling into the nucleus. So the question is. From where the electron is getting its energy to revolve around the nucleus as it is continuously consuming it. Rutherford couldn't answer this question. Second objection: uh, When the thing moves, there is there are certain um, exhaustive uh, energy. Like uh, just an example: when uh, when a car moves, when a car moves. There is always some gases which are going out through the silencer, right? Always, you will see this one. So as the motion is there, as the car is moving, continuously there is uh, um, some gases must be producing from the silencer. Similarly, if electron is revolving, then some of the energy must be going down. If you continuously, okay, since the electron is moving continuously, so the so it should emit energy continuously. But in actual practice, what happens? Instead of continuous uh, emission of energy, we uh, the scientists observe that electrons are emitting energy discontinuously. What does it mean? Electrons start motion, then stop, then start, then stop, then start, then stop. No, if it is stop, it will fall into the nucleus. And okay, the picture of energy is called a spectrum. As you can see, what is the what is according to the concept? This is a difficult one. What is according to the concept? The electron is moving continuously, so we should have a continuous spectrum. But in actual practice, but in actual actual practice, we are getting uh, we are getting what this discontinuous spectrum or line spectrum, as you can see on the right side. So these two questions were. 
quite difficult and Rutherford couldn't answer these questions. Then what happened? There came a scientist, Bohol. And amazing thing is this, the Bohol is the student of Rutherford. Bohol is the student of Rutherford. I told you something about Bohol, just think, what did I uh, tell you earlier? Do you remember? First thing, Rutherford was delivering a theory like this to his students and he put forward the two objections, the two problems that the people, the scientists asked from where the electron is getting its energy infinitely. Then Bohor and Rutherford, they both think on this and Bohor gave a solution in the form of a theory which is known as Bohor's atomic theory. Whatever we see all around us is directly or indirectly related with this Bohor's theory. When you press the button of uh, a remote or when you call on the mobile phone, all related with this theory, Bohor's theory. Okay? So first thing is, according to Mr. Bohor, electrons are allowed to move in their orbits, in certain orbits. These orbits are called, these orbits are called energy levels. Okay? Like planets are revolving around the sun. So who is going to patrol, who is going to provide patrol to the planets? No one. So why the planets are revolving? From where they are getting their energy? Get the gravitational pull. Similarly, Bohr tells the electron will not lose its energy. Why? Because there exists a force, there exists a force, and what is that force? The force of electricity between protons and, and between positively charged particles and elect negatively charged particles. So what is the first thing? As soon as the electron revolves around the nucleus in various energy levels, it will not lose its energy. It will only lose its energy when it uh, leaves its shell. Okay. And then it will give off energy. So what is the point written here? Electrons can move only in certain allowed energy level. First thing. Uh, it, it, this, this part, uh, this, let me give you an example. The stairs. You can only stand at certain point. I step, not mid of the step. You can't stand over there. Similarly, electrons are allowed to move in certain levels. Either here they can move or here they can move, not everywhere. Secondly, they do not give off, they do not lose their energy and they, they will not fall into the middle. Then, where are they, get, uh, why are they producing energy? The, the thing has become, uh, I know the thing has become difficult to understand right now. Suppose, and let me just give you an example for the part number two. Energy levels, electrons are revolving in the first level, suppose its energy is 50. In, in, electron can revolve in the second level, its energy is 70. Now let's consider an electron is there in the second shell, 70. Now it is jumping into the first shell where the energy is 50. There is some extra surplus energy. How much? 70 minus 50. So 70 is the value of E2 you look at the, uh, on the screen. And minus 50, 70 minus 50, 20. This 20 is the energy which is released in the form of light. This is written over here, H nu. So try to understand this second part. Uh, I'll try to explain it on the board again inshallah in the next class just this just this, this part okay repeating very 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 briefly some uh, let's see an electron is there in the second shell where the energy is 70 it is jumping to the first shell where the energy is 50 how much energy is surplus 70 minus 50 so so the value of e2 is 70 the value of e1 is 50 the, on the extreme left, this is in triangle E. Triangle E means difference of E, delta E. Delta means minus. So, 
when 70 minus 50, it will become 20. So what is the change in energy? What is the energy? Surplus, uh, what is the surplus energy? 20. This 20 energy is released in the form of light. And where the symbol of light is H V. H is not V, it's actually a Greek symbol nu. H nu. I hope you understood a little bit. Okay, so what is today's topic? Again, a topic that you already know. What can I do? It is in the syllabus. You know that from the basics that each atom has certain number of protons. That number is simply called charge number or atomic number. Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> so what is the atomic number? The number of protons present in the nucleus of an atom. The number of protons present in the nucleus of an atom. It is represented by Z. Suppose if there are seven protons in an atom, then its atomic number will be seven. If there are ten protons in the nucleus of an atom, then its atomic number will be ten. Okay? And what else in the nucleus we have? Protons and neutrons. If we add protons and neutrons, what will you get? Mass number. Okay? Pro atomic number means only protons. Mass number means add protons and neutrons. When you see a number uh, symbol with two numbers sitting, then the smaller number always represents the atomic number, and the bigger number always represents the mass number. As you can see in the example, and nitrogen, the smaller number is seven. Here it is written. This is usually written as subscript on the left side. And what is this mass number 14? I hope that you remember this from the previous classes. Okay, let's see an example, a little bit difficult or typical example. Think what is showing here. I am giving you one minute. Try to understand by yourself. All right, so red color protons. How many protons? Nine. So its atomic number is nine. How many neutrons? Nine. So nine plus nine, 18. So its mass number is 18. Simple. So on the right side, where the mixture of red and blue balls, you can see what can you see over here? Protons and neutrons. Only protons will be found, 9. So its mass number would be, uh, sorry, its atomic number would be 9. What about its mass number? 9 plus 9, 18. Clear? Yeah. Okay. See this by yourself again. All right. See the next. Okay. Isotope means same number of atoms with same atomic number but different masses okay for example you can as a whole of carbon there could be different types of carbon carbon whose atomic mass is uh, mass number is 12 whose mass number is 13 whose mass number is 14 but all of these are considered as carbon why because they have same number of protons they have different number of Neutron. So what is the definition over here? Atoms of the same element having same atomic number but different mass number are called isotopes. Right? Like that of carbon. We may have different carbons. All have same protons, that is why their atomic number is six. But their number of neutrons are different. Their number of neutrons are different. They will have same proton number but different neutron number. So what is another definition? Here you can see atoms of the same element having same atomic number and having same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Isotopes of, of, of oxygen, isotopes of hydrogen, isotopes of uranium. Okay, let me ask about isotopes of uranium. 
What is the atomic number of uranium? Correct, 92. What is the mass number of these isotopes? 234, 235, 236. Correct. Now, considering this, let me ask you a question. Consider any example from them, from these. Let's see carbon, carbon's example. Carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. First question. For carbon, what is the atomic number of carbon over here? Correct, the smaller one, six. What are the mass numbers of each isotope? Right, one is 12. And there is 13, there is 14. Two questions done. Atom number is 6 in, for each case, and the mass number are 12, 13, 14, that's 15. Next question How many protons in the first isotope of carbon? Obviously, 6, because its atom number is 6. 6, a proton number and a proton and atomic number both are the same. So it has 6 protons. Okay, and let me ask you um, another question. Atom is neutral. As many as positive particles as there are negatively charged particles. So if I ask, in carbon 6, 13, number of protons, you said 6. If I ask, how many electrons? You will say, you will say what? You will say, Six again. Why? Because proton and electron are equal in number. So six protons and six electrons in F, all of the neutral cases. And how many neutrons? How many neutrons? Just subtract the smaller number from the bigger one. Very simple. Subtract the smaller number from the bigger one. So thirteen minus 6 will become 7. Okay? See another example. Um, oxygen 818. Atomic number 8. Mass, mass number 18. Protons 8. Electrons 8. Neutrons subtract the 2. 18 minus 8, 10. See another example, hydrogen, 1H3. Hydrogen number 1, mass number 3, proton 1, electron 1, neutrons, 3 minus 1, 2. See this one. Take the screenshot, research on it afterwards. What is another name of deuterium? Uh, hydrogen H2 deuterium. H3 triton. Z means atomic number. N is mass number. So if you see in the first column, 1H1, the smaller number is 1. Mass number is 1 also. Protons and Z, Z value are same. 1, electron 1. And neutrons, subtract the 2. 1 minus 1 is 0 to 0. What is the homework? Check Google Classroom. This time, uh, this is the real assignment. This is the real assignment. Uh, you need enough brainstorming to, fill, to do that one. Okay, that's all for today. Next is electronic communication and the end exercise of the three. If you have any question, ask in the group. Assignment is a little bit difficult, not difficult, typical. You will have to spend time on it. It is uh, just uh, relating with the last part, last five minutes of today's class. Thank you so much.